Coach? Hey, everybody. Uh, good Thursday for us. Uh, guys have been really good in, in our preparation. Uh, I know I talked to you guys early in the week, but the, the week's uh, unfolded really well. I uh, like what uh, our guys are doing. Um, we continue to evolve here. The next you know, 48 hours will be important for us, but uh, like where we're at, great opportunity this week. Uh, got a really good opponent coming in, uh, first and foremost. Uh, we got to go play our best, and, and uh, obviously offensively uh, and special teams got to take care of the football. Uh, they've done a great job of changing the way the game's played in those two phases. Uh, and defensively, we got to do a great job of, of getting these guys into third and long and, and then getting off the football field too. A uh, great opportunity this weekend to, to celebrate one of the greats that's ever played here too, Al Wilson. Uh, honored to have him uh, lead our, our, our ball walk here on Saturday afternoon. Great opportunity for our fans to uh, really just, uh, you know, emphasize uh, you know what he means to, to Vol Nation and what he's done. Uh, you know, a guy that to me embodies everything that it means to, to be a, a volunteer. Uh, a guy that cares about his teammates still to this day more than he cares about himself. Um, a guy that plays the right way has always done that. Uh, honored to have him here and, and uh, looking forward to having him you know spend some time with our football team over the course of the weekend too. So with that I'll open it up to some questions. We'll start with Vince then we'll go to Austin. Josh, and some of those things that you said you liked about how they've handled practice this week, I know there's a lot of factors involved in that, but what are the, some of the specific things you look for coming off of a win to make sure your guys are still dialed in to want more? Yeah, for sure. Uh, just the, the energy that, that they practice with. Um, you know, when we go good on good, what's, what's the, the tempo of it? What's the strain? Uh, when we go into uh, scout periods, you know, what's the attention to detail? What's the effort that we're getting? Not just from the guys that are playing on Saturday, but from the other guys too. It's our entire program practicing the right way. Uh, we're starting to develop good habits, not where we need to be. Um, you guys have heard me say this, the last 48 hours is going to be critical in this one too, and, and we continue to grow in, in that way too. Coach, you talked about the last 48 hours. You talked about last week about seeing some leadership emerge. You don't want to specify anybody just because you felt like it was still in its infancy. Um, this team started to clean things up. Penalties went down last week. No turnovers the last couple of weeks. Do you feel like you know you guys are really turning the corner with the little things you've been talking about? I think we're going to find out Saturday afternoon at, at 12 o'clock. Uh, you're only as good as your next one. I do think there's attention uh, to the detail of those things. Those are things that we've been emphasizing as a coaching staff since we got here. There's a growth to it. Uh, you've heard me say we're kind of in a race against ourselves to be as good as we can. Um, they've taken more ownership. There's some ownership from leadership within the locker room. We talked about that um, you know, a week and a half ago. Um, but uh, I think our guys are starting to grow that way too. But you don't ever take those things for granted. Um, the only thing that matters is Saturday at 12 o'clock. Jimmy and Ben. Josh, what uh, impresses you most about South Carolina's offense and what impresses you most about South Carolina's defense? Uh, defensively, uh, turnovers, um, interceptions, fumbles, um, they rip at it every time that they get an opportunity. Um, you, you can't just sit back in the pocket. Uh, they have the ability to you know, change the game with the way that they, they rush the quarterback. Um, offensively, uh, their ability to, to maintain some balance, the athleticism of the quarterback at times to get outside of the pocket and make plays too, that's something that, that uh, you know, it's hurt us in the past that we got to do a great job of pushing the pocket, but then having rush integrity in our lanes too and, and making sure that we bottle him up. Josh, you all have had more noon games than not this year and uh, have still been able to get out to fast starts. How much do you think practicing in the morning has helped with fast starts in those noon games? I, I, I mean, I've practiced later in the afternoon and, and started fast with early games and, and vice versa too in, in, in a not positive way. I think it comes down to your competitive spirit, you know, how your uh, approach has been in the hours and days that lead up into it and, uh, you know, then uh, just the, the ability to go out and, and uh, perform at the, at the right level. So, Mike? Josh, when was the black jersey concept something that you heard about or, or kind of learned about, and why was that something that, that you and your staff embraced? Yeah, for, first uh, first morning or first meeting that I had with the, the football team uh, the day that I got introduced, you know, I told you we spent an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes in there talking about, you know, a lot of things that, that matter, some things that they felt like were important. Jerseys were at the end of that conversation. Um, <clears throat> To me, the player experience is at the forefront of everything that we do, right? There's non-negotiables from, from myself and, and our coaching staff and, and how you got to 
attack every day, whether that's in the weight room, whether that's class, whether that's on the football field, right? But then there, there's some things that you want to give them ownership in and make the player experience as good as it can be on and off the field. Uniforms is something that, that uh, it's, it's important to them. And, and uh, in some ways it's important in the recruiting uh, world as well. And, and so for us, <clears throat> that was something that, you know, I don't know, maybe a month and a half, two months onto the job, right? I mean, the first month and a half, you're, you're just trying to get your feet on the ground and get everybody here and get going. But after that, uh, it's something that uh, we started to talk with uh, the administration about and, and uh, worked on some designs. Obviously, just with the pandemic and everything that's gone on, um, you know, supply chains and those types of things kind of limited uh, our options as late in the process as we were. And, and so that's how we decided to go with uh, the black and orange uh, in this first uh First rendition. You always talk about process. Um, what about the process of chemistry with the coaching staff from when you got here, and where is that process right now? You're, you're always building trust. You're always building lines of communication. Uh, there's a ripple effect as a head coach in every interaction that you have with everybody inside your building every day. That's true with your staff. That's true with your strength and conditioning. It's true with academics. It's, it's true with you know the people that are, that are cleaning up after you. And, and uh, so just being mindful of that, uh, I think we do have great trust. Some of that is uh, with the ability to bring people with me that I, I've had you know previous years with uh, at the previous stop. Whether I knew guys that were coming in for the first time, right, and, and they know who I am and what I'm about, uh, to you know some of the hires that hadn't been with me previously or I hadn't known that have connections with other people on this staff, um, made it easier to get started in, in the right direction. I do think that uh, there's a clear vision of, of who and what we want to be. I think. And I think I know that we have coaching staff members that are about the exact same thing. And, and so when you have a, a vision that's very similar, uh, you're able to, to grow extremely quickly. Um, you know, you know, part of that is just like our wives community, too. And, and uh, my wife and the other wives on staff have started to form that community, too, that, that impacts, you know, who we are as a program. Our players see and feel those things, too. Jimmy, they back off. Uh, Josh, two things. One, in, in short yardage situations, what do you see as the pros and cons of a quarterback being under center versus a quarterback being in the shotgun? Yeah, it's simply reading an outside defender. You know, I mean, if, it's the difference of being under center and in the gun and normal downs too. And do you know a percentage like at times when you've been in the shotgun, if you had success, 80 percent, 90 percent? Do you know the percentage of success over the last 10 years of being a coordinator? I don't have that number for you. I, I can research that. For Central you. Florida. <laughs> I mean. I can, I'll, I'll go research that. <laughs> Coach, you talk about that being the first rendition of the jerseys. Do you, do you envision, I mean, I get orange and white's going to always be the, the traditional look, but as far as going outside the box, and, and would you wear black pants on the road with a white top? Boy, you, you've seen me at, at these press conferences. Me, or, uh, um, you know, me picking out every design of a uniform is probably not the right way for, for this program to go. You know what I mean? Uh, in saying that, um, your first question was, what was the first? Do you envision more renditions of this then? I, I, I do think we'll have an alternate uniform that uh, will appear uh, periodically throughout the season. We have an unbelievable the best college football uniform, like uh, the orange and white, the classic look. Like, there's nothing better, man. Like it, it, the helmet to the pants to the jersey, the combinations you put together. Our players love that uniform, right? But you're also able to put put a new twist on things too, and and change things up. So yes, we will have you know different combinations that show up during the course of the season. Uniform combinations that show up on game day, our leadership council, you know, on Sundays they come in and, and have medical treatment. Those guys are a part of, of picking out what we wear uh, for the following game. <coughs> South Carolina had a player, a defender, get rid of the football before crossing the end zone. Mm -hmm. um, two things. One, has that ever happened to you as a coach of one of your players? And how much do you guys teach that kind of thing and prevent it? Never happened as a coach. Happened as a as a player. I uh, had a teammate that uh, that did it uh, in a in a big football game. Um, we showed two clips prior to them um, 
uh, prior to it happening that happened during the course of the season, uh, one where we were close to, to doing the same thing. Um, those are educational opportunities. We always pick plays that happen throughout the country and show them in our, in our Monday team meeting as we debrief from the, the previous week. Those are also things that we, we showed during the, the course of training camp too. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank you. Great, guys. Appreciate it.